CNG Ports clarifies shortlisted companies for lay port duties. Tourists fly direct from Brisbane to Alata. And the new look 8th generation Hilux. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. Hello and welcome. This is Saturday's News. Thanks for joining us. Well, PNG Ports Corporation has come out to dispel suggestions that a final decision has been made to bring in Filipino company ICTSI to manage the Lay Port Terminal. Responding to questions put to the state's agency, PNG Ports says while ICTSI is one of four shortlisted companies, a final decision is not yet made. MTV's Lay Bureau Chief Scott Wider has more. PNG Ports maintains that the decision on the foreign contractor who will manage the lay port operations has yet to be finalized. The expressions of interest phase ended on the 14th of September with 12 companies responding to the invitation. Out of the 12, four were chosen and they include the much talked about Filipino company ICTSI, a Filipino owned multinational port terminal operator that has operations in Africa, Asia and the Middle East. <laughs> Port workers in Leh have been protesting over the government's move to bring in foreign operators. They argue that such a move would put the current PNG-owned stevedoring companies out of business. Meanwhile, councillors of the Labu area, people who are traditional inhabitants of Leh city, also say they'll support the government's move. All I'm interested in is if there's a company, the development is here to stay. But provided everybody has to benefit not one plow, two plow, that's what's now the issue of Labu holdings. Not everybody in Labu is shareholders. By the second quarter of 2016, a final decision on the port operator will be made and a company should commence business in 2017. Scott Wade, National MTV News, Leigh. Well, Leigh Police Boss Anthony Wagambi Jr. personally visited East Taraka today in his first community awareness outreach as Leigh's Metropolitan Commander. The Leigh suburb is still angered and shocked after a seven-year-old boy was sexually assaulted and killed by a man on Sunday. The body retrieved on Monday. The boy's father, Andrew Keropa Wanove, who was at the gathering, says he wants peace in the community and called on the police to carry out their job. The killing of the seven-year-old comes as a shock to the East Taraka community. Today, lay police boss Anthony Wagamba Jr. met with the community to give awareness on how to deal with homebrew consumption in the community. The lay police have identified homebrew as the root cause for problems happening in lay society. While speaking to the community, Leigh's new Metropolitan Commander, Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. spoke out about the role communities had in assisting the police do their job. Homebrew has been the root cause for most rape, fights and murders. He stressed that simple human behavior of being polite, respectful and considerate in manner can reduce community disorder. It goes back to the community. So that's why we've been stressing this community awareness now. And we'll be going to other communities to ask them to take ownership of law and order issues, which means that when they know of incidents happening or like people who are brewing homebrew or drug dealers or whatever, they must report to us, we will take action. We have to take them into custody and deal with them so we get these people of the streets who are the root cause of the, all the big problems which happen around here. Istaraka was gripped with grief and anger when the body of Isaac Kerope, one of it, was found on Monday after being killed on Sunday. Isaac was sexually assaulted and stabbed multiple times by a man known to the family. Community must stop. One can, one time. You may live in peace. When the suspect was found, the father of the boy talked his family and tribesmen out from retaliating. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Lay. With Bulolo MP Sam Basila has questioned the unequal distribution of funds to provinces, including Morabe, under the development budget. Basil raised this issue following the poor state of Morabe's Bulolo Highway that has been deteriorating for years. 
the highway serves as an economic corridor to one of the government's revenue maker, Morabe's Hidden Valley Mine. This week, the Morabe leaders held a meeting in Port Moresby where the issue of unequal distribution of funds was discussed. A concerned Bulolo MP, Sam Basil, was very critical on the development budgetary allocation. His question comes after noting the Bulolo Highway has deteriorated over time, which needed the national government's immediate attention. Its road condition has been the same throughout, receiving less attention for road repairs. Because we have been neglected and we are continuing to be neglected. And just because Prime Minister Mikoroslo, member of Lolei, look, he gave nothing for Lei. <coughs> Basil says the Bulolo Highway serves as a link to one of the government's revenue maker, the Hidden Valley Mine. For many years, the mine has relied on the Bulolo Highway for transporting its goods and carrying out its mine services. Look at Bulolo District. Hidden Valley Mine is pouring money into the coffers and NCDC is getting 100 million, Hela is getting 100 million, while we lay and Morobe got nothing. This is road law, lay city, you know, Makam Bridge, you go on top law, Hidden Valley. It's an economic uh, corridor. It's a, it's, it's a road that brings services up. Colin Barilai, National MTV News. Well, Northern Governor Gary Chufa has commended lay MP Lochai Kauza for standing up for the churches. His comments come after Kauza was sacked from the Prime Minister's People's National Congress Party. The government has promised that a certain percentage from the first LNG proceeds will be given to churches as tithes. It was this question on the floor of Parliament that placed lay open MP Lujaya Kuza at odds with the government. Basically when you stand up and ask a question without notice on the Honourable Floor of Parliament in the last session to ask whatever happened to the 1-2% to of LNG project proceeds promised as a tithe, promised as a tithe to the God of Israel in whom this country is in covenant with. Instead, on Wednesday this week, she was given the second from the People's National Congress Party. Kuza, on several occasions, as the then Community Development Minister, queried whether proceeds were already in the Kumul Church Trust Fund. Several MPs have come out in support of her boldness and condemned the manner of her second. And the manner and way in which uh, she has been... Uh, set from the party uh, is a is a total uh, uh, disappointment and disgrace to the people of Leh and Morobe province. Asked that question, and because the government had failed to fulfil its promise, that the government basically lied to the churches, she decided that she was going to speak up, and as a result, she was she was kicked out in a very unceremonious way. Churches continue to be key partners in the delivery of services in the country where government presence is limited, especially in the most rural areas, and the proceeds would have contributed significantly to their operations. Northern Governor Gary Jufa has joined his colleague in calling on the government to honour its commitment. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Well, still to come on National MTV News tonight, Air New Guinea's inaugural flight from Brisbane to Alatal and Elamautis launches the new Hilux. Stay with us for those stories and more. Thanks for your company and welcome back to National MTV News. The first group of international tourists flew directly from Australia to be part of Milan Bay's Canoe and Kundu Festival. Passengers were privileged to board Air New Guinea's test flight to begin the direct service from Brisbane to Alatau. This is part of the national government's decision to certify Alatau as an international port of entry under the Tourism Zone Support Initiative. MTV's Fabian Huckelitz was in Alatau and he files this report. Air New Guinea's Focus 70 Alpha November Romeo was given a welcome washdown to mark the test flight. The excitement was seen on people present at Gurney Airport. 
Prime Minister Peter O'Neill flew in early yesterday morning in the Falcon Chat to officiate at the 12th Canoen Kundu Festival, but made time available to welcome the delegation that was led by State Investments Minister Ben Micah. Meanwhile, Enugini Chief Executive Officer Simon Fu said the test flight complements the national government's tourism zone support initiative program and was to introduce direct flights out of Brisbane to sectors like Gurney Alatau. This was also to improve the tourism sector and give direct access to local small to medium enterprises to make money. We shall be using the F-70 for a lot of these uh, regional runs outside of Port Moresby. Uh, runs like uh, Port Moresby to Honiara, Port Moresby to Fiji, Port Moresby to Vanuatu, Port Moresby to Cairns, Port Moresby to Mount Hagen in our own country, Port Moresby to Alatau and Port Moresby to Austin. Meanwhile, Milan Bay remains a potential tourism hub province with Guinea Airport to start receiving international flights from Brisbane, Australia soon. In Alatau, Milan Bay province, Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. Well, Alamoto is the country's leading distributor of the Toyota brand of vehicles revealed the new 8th generation Hilux in what was a spectacular show of lights, music and fireworks. The brand new 6th element made its debut in Port Moresby last night. NTV's Leanne Girari with more. Motor vehicle enthusiasts turned out in droves last night at the Rita Flynn Sports Complex to witness the spectacular debut of the Toyota Hilux 6th Element. And it certainly lived up to expectations as amidst a dazzling display of fireworks and light shows, the 6th Element made its grand entrance. One could say the Toyota Hilux was built for Papua New Guinea. With our rough terrains and roads, the Hilux has been a popular vehicle for PNG customers since its introduction in the 1980s. The sixth element uses the keen look design language that has already been used in the Toyota E170 with slim projector headlights and LED daytime running lights. As the concept shows, uh, it got tougher, means uh, stronger. The frame has a, uh, has a uh, wider frame and it has enhanced the strength of the body. And also uh, the interior has a very luxury uh, interior, which you can see from the uh, very emotional uh, uh, designs. And uh, also the riding comfort is maybe the uh, biggest uh, effort because of the suspension uh, modification. Uh, has made a, a very big uh, what, a smoothness on the riding comfort. Leanne Girari, National MTV News. The Bank of Papua New Guinea is exploring digital options to provide financial services to average Papua New Guineans. In a recent meeting with financial educators from other countries, Central Bank Governor Loy Bakani says providing digital financial services to rural areas will minimize the high cost of establishing banks in smaller towns. MTV's Tekla Gunga has more on this report. The Bank of Papua New Guinea, through its Center for Excellence in Financial Education, is looking at increasing access for people in rural areas to do banking digitally. Bhavana Srivastava is the Associate Director for Microsafe. From their research findings, over 16 billion people in the world accessing mobile phones do not bank on a global scale. There are a lot of innovations that are being made across the world. But why is it that these innovations just remain at the pilot stage? According to an evaluation provided by Microsafe on the provision and accessibility of digital financial service in the Asia and Pacific region, there are three stages of accessing financial digital service. These stages include the increase in mobile network penetration, customers paying payments through digital channels from rural areas, and customers having broad access to all financial products. I'm designing a product that is, that is catering to any financial need of, of the poor. The evaluation revealed that PNG is at a transition point from stage one to stage two. Average Papua New Guineans have access to mobile phones in rural areas, but do not use mobile banking. A way forward is to target these unbanked areas and introduce the digital financial services. 
Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Youths in Lepa Magana in Rigo District, Central Province, have pledged to work together to make a difference in their society. They are hoping for a better tomorrow with their involvement in spiritual empowerment programs offered by their local church. And yesterday, the community celebrated the opening of the new church and also invited Morabe Governor Kelly Naru. It's about giving hope in life. The opening of the new church building is a symbol of hope for the Lepamangana youths. Their active participation in the construction of this church building was an eye-opener for the community. Businesswoman Linda Burana and her husband assisted in the construction of the church building. They run a stationary company, BNDL Trading, but were also compelled to make a difference in the community. We all pick in the man, pick in the Mary, plant illegal homebrew, other activities, illegal activities, where, you know, good plan, no community. Or say now, people decide, law, what can we In other words, we were really trying to help the community. The blessing of the city come here. Marabe Governor Kelly Naru who is not new to the community, was invited as a guest at the opening. He also donated 10,000 kina as part of his assistance in the church and government partnership program. This is boundary, na area, na jurisdiction, blong anotu blong yumi god papa. I'm in a boundary blong em. Boundary blong em, em is not blong ogra up inside long this black ground. The new church building will become the center of workshop for the youths and community to enhance spiritual growth. Melissa Goviro, National MTV News. Well, Miss PNG Air Services Mary Conobor Jr. is the latest entrant in the Miss Pacific Islands pageant. Conobor is up against six other young women hoping to represent PNG in the Miss Pacific Islands pageant in Cook Islands next month. Crowning night for the Miss PNG hopefuls will be held on the 14th of this month here in Port Moresby. MTV's Marilyn Diao Katam has more. This is the second year PNG Air Services has sponsored a contestant. First was 2014 Miss PNG, Grace Nugi, and now Mary Konobo Jr. Mary Konobo Jr. aspires to be an ambassador for change. Her vision is to promote environment conservation and human self-development. Looking forward to meeting the other contestants. And I believe that, as they have always said, that we friendships for a lifetime are formed when these girls come together. And I hope that we could create or establish our friendships among ourselves. PNGS Services Limited have also supported the Miss South Pacific Islands Pageant Committee raise funds to assist young PNG girls on education scholarship. Managing Director Captain Ted Paki said the company was pleased to support such ready cause. On Thursday saw the launching of the Miss PNG ASL 2015. 2014 Miss PNG Grace Nugi was present to give her moral support. She said the pageant is a journey of self-discovery and said traveling overseas to represent PNG reinforces the feeling of patriotism. He tackled issues from where I was, from where I am, um, basically in the highlands. Uh, so um, issues about gender violence, um, education for the young, especially the women, and also um, conservation, because Papua New Guinea is home to a vast amount of biodiversity, and um, that's where a lot of um, Papua New Guinea has been put on the map, is because of our wildlife. Marilyn Diaukatam, National MTV News. And that's where we wrap up our news segment tonight. But stay tuned. We have True Guy Sports. That's coming up next. The Eastern Papua Carnival gets underway. Also, Rapatona FC debuts in the NSL. And the Baramandis prepare for the Intercontinental Cup. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome and thanks for joining me with Tukai Sports over to soccer. 
It's been almost two years since the last competition, but the Eastern Papua Carnival, or EPC, was in full swing today at the Port Moresby Sir John Guy Stadium. The Eastern Papua Carnival is an annual tournament featuring the best of Milan Bay's football talent. Established in 1978 with only 16 clubs, the competition has, over time, evolved and produced some of the biggest stars in PNG football. Hikari's Kemadrak and the Lepani brothers with FC Port Moresby have all had a run in the competition for various clubs. President Bid Tomokita says the hype surrounding the start of the 2015 tournament had been overwhelming. Jeremy, you can see, you know, you can feel it. I can feel it in my bones that uh, there's so much excitement we have generated. Uh, I suppose because while we were off, the, the build-up of uh, our players and our people from Mulebay for them to get back into EPC soccer has really built up over the, the last two years. And so we're now ready to kick off and you can see with the preparations that have been put in by the clubs and the sponsors that have come in is so immense and I'm, I'm so impressed with the preparations so far. Defending 2013 champions, Mayala had had a big opening win, while former champions Gabutu also had a crushing 4-1 victory on day one. The competition will run for the next four weeks, and Tomokita also believes there is enough talent to push for an NSL run. We have started uh, you know, pushing the idea around, and uh, we are definitely looking at that. Yes, yes, definitely. Jeremy Moggy, National, MTV Sports. And still on the topic of soccer, debutante Rapatona FC is looking at a strong first season in the National Soccer League. With experience on its side, winning the competition is not Rapatona's focus at the moment. The majority of the players have been taken from the Rapatona Premier Division side playing in the Port Moresby Soccer Association. The team is sponsored by club patron Kisakyu Posmon and are looking at their franchise expanding. Youth remains key for the club. It is because we have a, a, a plan, a structural plan that we're building the club. It's not one of thing. Uh, the plan has been there and we're developing players from, from the lower level up to, to a standard that is expected of a new standard of soccer. A number of big name players also feature for the predominantly Manusian side. They include midfielder Michael Foster, strikers Patterson Elijah and Patrick Iza and also John Bai. Uh, they all came from the club. Uh, they are youths. And the club has uh, uh, the tendency of building youths to, to mature players. And as you can see, we have a number of youths in there. And we're not rushing to uh, uh, come out and you know try to win everything. We are here to build a team for the, in the long run for the, for the season. Rapatona have one thing going for them at the moment. Like most at debuting teams, it will take time for their players to adjust to the pace of the National Soccer League. But having said that, it will also take time for other teams to adjust to their special brand of football. Jeremy Moggy, National MTV Sports. Over to cricket, PNG's national team, the Baramandis, will tour the United Arab Emirates for the second round of the Intercontinental Cup and World Cricket League champions. The Baramandis are set to play two warm-up matches against Omen and local cricket club Danube. MTV's Gian Komeng reports. Team Baramandis is led by captain Jack Vare and vice-captain Asad Vala. Most members are currently in Port Mosby competing in the Gaba Champion Shield, while others including Lega Siaka and Hirihiri will join the team later from Australia. The team is looking forward to competing against two quality sides, Nepal and Afghanistan, said coach Deepak Patel. The team is currently working on improving some of their tactics with training progressing well. Coach Patel believes in the team following their outstanding performance at the recent South Australian Cricket Association League in Australia. Meanwhile, PNG's position on the ladder, fourth place in the ICAP table and eighth in the WCLC. However, the team hopes to improve their ranking in the coming competition. Dion Kombeng, National MTV Sports. Well, that report wraps up our True Guy Sports segment tonight, but stay tuned. We have the weather details after this break. True Guy Sports. Three. 
And now let's check out the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in southern region, the nation's capital, to look forward to cloudy periods with chances of patchy rain, mostly fine expected in Daru and Alatau, brief showers for Popandeta, while Kerama to look forward to cloudy periods and brief showers. In the Mamasa region, all centres to look forward to brief showers. In the New Guinea Islands, showers and possible thunderstorms developing in Kimbe. That's the same expected in Rabaul and Buka, while Loringa and Kavang to look forward to showers plus rain. And lastly, in the islands region, all centres to look forward to evening showers, then thunderstorm. And that's how we wrap up the bulletin on this Saturday, the 7th of November, 2015. From the news crew, I'm Tokana Hasavi Jr. Thanks for your company. You take care and stay happy. Good night.